He's the God of the second chance. If, if we just don't quit, we can't quit. So let's, let's just look at it real quickly, some things to do to get us ready. We're going to get positioned for God's comeback. Okay, number one, you got to realize a comeback, a divine reversal is possible. You got to realize it's possible. It's not just for these, these stories that I've just told you about. It's possible for you. Here's the problem. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And if you heard Apostle Tom and you heard Pastor Dean this morning encouraging us that sometimes we, we fight for a long time for a miracle, and if we're not careful, we can grow weary in well-doing. And we can become convinced that it's never going to happen. Maybe you've prayed for your family forever, and it seems like they're never going to get saved. I'll tell you what, I don't know how many decades I prayed for my family, but both of my parents love Jesus now and are born again. Amen? They were agnostic. They didn't, they didn't really believe in God, and they, they didn't really go to church. They didn't really do anything. I'm telling you what, they both love Jesus today because in a minute, God can turn everything around. God turned their lives around. Hope deferred, though, makes the heart sick. I love the way that the message translation says it. It says, unrelenting disappointment can make your heart sick. But a sudden good break can turn your life around. Did you hear what God was saying this morning through Pastor Dean? A sudden good break. Come on. A now. This is your moment. This is your time. You can have your miracle today. You can experience turnaround today. Engage your faith. Shake off the hope deferred and begin to engage with faith once again. Amen? Number one, get, get, believe that it's possible. Number two, ask God for a strategy to advance. Now, I want to say this. When I say strategy to advance, we've just come from a conference in Michigan that was called Restoring the Family Altar. And a lot of times we go looking for a prophetic word, and prophetic words are one of the ways that God will give us a strategy. God will give us a word that emboldens our faith. But can we please get back to reading the Bible for ourselves? Can we get back to daily prayer? Can we get back to meditating on the word? Can we get back to times of personal worship? If this is the only time you're worshiping, let me just say, you're only scratching the surface of your relationship with God. A friend of mine just gave Apostle Tom, a friend of ours just gave Apostle Tom a book when he was out in Phoenix last week uh, named Cheryl Sachs, and it's called Fire on the Family Altar. We need to get build altars to God in our homes. Times of prayer, times of, of fellowship with God, times of inviting the presence of the Lord into our homes. Ooh, it's quiet. Thank you, Paul. This is what she heard the Holy Spirit say. She was getting ready to step out onto a platform to lead the nation in prayer for America. And she heard the Lord say, uh, revival will come to America when the family altar is restored. We can pray for revival all we want here, but we need to take that home. We need to be crying out to God in our homes. We need to be praying, fellowshipping with God, worshiping God. We need to be filling the atmosphere of our homes with the presence of God. Restoring the family altar. Psalms 85 verse 8 says, I will hear what the Lord God will speak. Well, how does God speak? Yes, he speaks through prophets. But if, if you're only hearing God speak through prophets, you're missing it. We should be hearing God speak through the word. We should be hearing God speak to us personally. We should be hearing God speak to us during our times of personal worship and devotion to him. I will hear what the Lord God will speak. That word here is the word shama. And shama means to listen, to hear, to discern. But when you go a little deeper, that word in Hebrew actually means to listen intentionally and to hear intelligently. Do you need an answer from God? Yes, we have prophetic teams that will pray for you. We love doing that. We believe that's one of the ways that God gives answers. But I hope that you'll grab a hold of this and say, I'm going to learn to listen to the voice of God for myself. We had a pastor friend that before 
he would set up a counseling meeting with somebody. He would, they would have a counseling session with him. He would have them spend an hour in the prayer room before they spent any time in his office. You go listen to God in the prayer room for an hour and then come in here and tell me what the Lord said. I don't know, honey. Might be a good idea. Dr. Chuck had probably cut the counseling load down. Because guess what? When people actually stop and listen to God, God will speak to you. God will answer you. Okay? God will answer you. I just, I, I feel very passionate about the church today is that if we're not careful, we become a church that yes, we prophesy and yes, we cast out damp devils, but do we know the word? If we don't know the word, then we are, it's like trying to drive with no fuel in your tank. You're going to burn out. You're going to burn up. You've got to have the word in your life. You've got to have a personal devotion and prayer in your life. How many are feeling the challenge of the Lord to rekindle a, fam a family altar? Amen. All right. That's number two. Number three is fight forward. Quit looking back. Don't give up. Don't quit. Be willing to change. Contend for your dream. Contend for your dream. I love Jude verse one through uh, chapter. Well, Jude is verse three, chapter one, only one chapter. In the message, it says, dear friends, I've dropped everything to write to you about this life of salvation we have in common. I have to write insisting, begging that you fight with everything you have in you for this faith entrusted to us as a gift to guard and to cherish. Listen, we've got to be like David that went up against Goliath. We've got to be willing to not look back. We can't look back and, and say, well, you know what? This happened in the past or that happened in the past. That's why we tell testimonies of what God did to break through. Let's, if we're going to look back, look back on those. Don't look back on, uh, on, 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 uh, uh, on defeats. Look back on victories. Because he's the God of victory. Let's set that before our face. Because David, when he went up against Goliath, he didn't go without a testimony. He had a testimony. God, you've used this sling to kill a lion. You've used this sling to kill a bear. Around here, we may need to get some slings because we have a really big bear that's on our property these days with two little cubs that shows up in our backyards, okay, and tries to eat bird feeders, okay? I've used this sling to kill a lion and a bear. He had a testimony. But when he went out against Goliath, Goliath was insulted. Who is this little pipsqueak of a boy that you're sending out against me? I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air. You know what Goliath was doing? He was prophesying to David. Do you know the devil will prophesy to you? The devil will prophesy to you and tell you how you're going to fail. He'll prophesy to you and tell you how your faith isn't going to work. He'll prophesy to you and tell you how you're a fool to believe God. That's what Goliath was doing. He's prophesying to David. You know what David did? He prophesied right back. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that you would defy the armies of the living God? Come on, listen to David's attitude. You come at me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come at you in the name of the Lord of hosts, whom you have defied. This day I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air. I'm going to take your head from you, and all the world will know that there's a God in Israel. Come on, we got to get that attitude. When the enemy comes at us and tries to bombard our minds, when he comes at us and tries to steal our family, when he comes at us and he tries to tell you about how helpless and hopeless your life is, we better start opening our mouth and prophesying back at the devil and telling him how great your God is. Yeah. 